hello and welcome to my channel so i might sound a bit bunged up during this video but that's just because i've got a little bit of a cold going on at the moment but it's okay anyway so on with the video and this video is going to be all about whether or not king henry the first of england's marriage was legal so henry was the youngest child of king william the conqueror and queen matilda of flanders he became King of England on the 2nd of August 1100 after the death of his older brother King William II in a hunting accident in the New Forest. And on the 11th of November he married Matilda of Scotland whose father was King Malcolm III of Scotland. Now Matilda was not actually her real name, it was actually Edith. But when Edith married Henry she changed her name from the Anglo-Saxon sounding Edith to the more Norman sounding Matilda. But because Edith was her real name and all the stuff I'm going to talk about happens before she married Henry. We will refer to her as Edith throughout this video. So Henry and Edith's marriage was actually a brilliant political move as Edith was actually descended from King Alfred the Great of England. She was the great granddaughter of Edmund Ironside who was King of England for around seven months in 1016. And so their marriage brought the Wessex Anglo-Saxon bloodline back into the English monarchy. So Edith was born sometime in 1080 and like I said her father was King Malcolm II of Scotland and her mother was Margaret of Wessex who became known as Saint Margaret. In 1086 Edith and her younger sister Mary were sent to the Abbey of Romsey to be looked after and educated by their aunt Christina. So Edith stayed at Romsey for about six or seven years and these were not happy years. Christina used to treat Edith harshly, she used to slap her and scold her and just constantly make her feel like she was always doing something wrong. She would also force her to wear a nun's veil. So before 1093, Edith and her sister were moved to Wilton Abbey to continue their education. Now, Wilton Abbey was a very good place for young girls to finish their education as it prepared them for the new Anglo-Norman world that they were going to be living in. So 1093, Edith's parents thought it was a good time for her to enter the marriage market. They had betrothed her to Alan the Red, Count of Richmond, but before the marriage could take place, Edith's father visited her at Wilton. He had been in England visiting King William II in a meeting that had not gone well and on the way back had decided to visit his daughters. He was also there because King William had visited Wilton Abbey the week, a week before and had seen Edith there dressed as a nun. So when Malcolm arrived at the Abbey he also found Edith dressed as a nun and he was not happy about this. So when you are putting on a nun's vow you are basically taking vows to dedicate your life to God. And also when you take the veil, you are effectively getting married to God so that if you married anyone else, you would be committing bigamy. So Malcolm may have been angry when he saw his daughter in the veil because he didn't want her to become a nun because as a Scottish princess, she was very valuable on the marriage market. So Malcolm took Edith back to Scotland with him and then promptly went to war with England, dying along with his son and heir Edward and then three days later Edith's mother Margaret died. Edith's betrothed Alan the Red then ran off with King Harold Godwinson's daughter Gunilda and then died. So Edith then disappears from all records until 1100 when she reappears again as a bride to King Henry I of England. It is unsure how they first met but it is thought that maybe Edith visited the English court and then that's when it happened. So Henry and Edith planned to marry but straight away questions were raised about whether their marriage would be legal. While she was at Romsey and Wilton Abbey Edith was seen by many witnesses wearing the veil. And this posed a question as to whether Edith had actually taken vows to become a nun. So because of these questions Edith actually arranged a meeting with Archbishop Anselm to get her side of the story across. She said that while at Wilton Abbey her aunt Christina had actually forced her to wear the veil but she really did not want to. She said of Christina forcing her to wear the veil that hood I did indeed wear in her presence chafing and fearful 
but as soon as I was able to escape out of her sight, I tore it off and threw it in the dirt and trampled on it. This was my only way of venting my rage and the hatred of it that boiled up in me. So Anselm then called a council to decide on the matter. And the council actually decided in Edith's favour using a ruler by the previous Archbishop Lanfranc which said that Anglo-Saxon women who had taken refuge in convents at the time of the Norman conquest were not to be held as sworn nuns when they emerged from hiding. The council also said under the circumstances of the matter the girl could not rightly be bound by any decision to prevent her from being free to dispose of her person in whatever way she legally wished. So Edith and Henry were free to marry, which they did on the 11th of November 1100, with Edith changing her name to Matilda. So I do actually think that Edith was telling the truth. She was after all a young girl through all this time. And sort of judging by her description of her aunt's behaviour to her, I think it would have been better to just keep the peace and wear the veil. And it could have been when she was at Wilton Abbey that she was also maybe forced to wear it then or whether she found it easier to wear the veil there. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think that their marriage was illegal or was they perfectly entitled to marry? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.